This is the plaintiff, Corolla Glass. She says she went to the defendant's house and was quickly evicted because the defendants are not. That's right. She did nothing wrong. There was no damage done to the house. And still, to this day, she can't seem to get the guy to return the $6,000 he now owes her for security and an alarm bill. So she's suing. This is the defendant, Maurice. He says the plaintiff wanted to keep the alarm system in the house active. She called the alarm company to place the bill into her name, and she signed a contract with them. Now, the woman wants him to pay the $4,000 alarm bill from the time she lived there? Please. If anyone's owed money today, it's him, because the plaintiff stole his two toilet paper holders and a mirror. He's accused of lousy landlording. The defendant has filed a camera suit for $505.92 for stolen items. Okay. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff rented from the defendant, was quickly evicted, and now can't get the security back. But the defendant says the plaintiff is a toilet paper holder thief. It's the case of my tenant is TP Creepy. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome, man. All right, Miss Glass. Hi. You are suing your former landlord, who you say has not returned your security deposit in full, and you want it back in full. All right, so talk to me. How long did you live there? I lived there for approximately two and a half years. And when you left, why did you leave? Um, they asked me to. All right, this is a place that you decided you were going to move back into? Yes. All right, so you didn't renew her lease? Correct. Okay. Now, according to you, you guys sent out a check. Then you realized you had the wrong amount for the security deposit and sent out another check. But the bottom line is the checks you sent to her, there's two checks and they total how much? Uh, one check was for $521. Okay. And the other one was for $450. Okay. So you sent her a total of $971. Yes. All right. Which means that you kept $479 of her security deposit. Why? There was a past due water bill for $171. Can I see the water bill? Do you deny that you owe the water bill? Correct, I do. The water bill wasn't in my name. Uh, who had been paying the water bill? I had been paying the water bill. Okay, then you know you're supposed to pay it. It may not be in your name, but if your agreement with him is that you're supposed to pay the water you use, then you're supposed to pay the water bill. What else did you keep her deposit for? Uh, there was a grass cutting fee for $35. Were uh, you responsible for maintaining the grass? I did tell them that I would uh, be responsible for okay. maintaining the yard. Okay, go on. Uh, locksmith of $95. Well, what happened with that? Did you guys do a walkthrough? She changed the locks. She was supposed to be out on May 31st. Uh, when my wife went over there on June 1st, the locks were changed. Uh, okay, she, so had there been any discussion about transferring the keys and stuff? There was a discussion uh, prior to us going over there around middle of May. She had a request on our app for me to come and fix a water leak. I went in, fixed the water leak. Prior to me leaving, I told her, just leave the garage door openers and the keys on the island, and that would be it. Okay, so and at some point, it. I think she was demanding a walkthrough and you called the police. Well, what happened was, yes. police came, they basically said, you know, we're here to keep the peace, what's going on? I told them I was in the process of moving out of the home and all I wanted to do was to have a walkthrough. At the time, the officer said, well, let us go out here and ask them if they get a walkthrough. The defendant basically said, no, we're not giving a walkthrough. So the police said, okay, if you're not gonna give her a walkthrough, then you need to leave and she can stay. Because legally, you have to evict her to make her leave here. And you did not evict her, you asked her to leave. And so if they were not gonna give me a walkthrough, okay. I was not gonna leave because I did not damage their home. I left that home in immaculate condition. And so they finally agreed after a short time, you know, about an hour later, they finally agreed to do the walkthrough. They did the walkthrough, the defendant signed for keys, garage door opener, and the items that I left in the home, which he stated he wanted left at the time of the notice on the 60-day notice. She lived there for two and a half years. Was it mostly okay or was it always kind of testy? It, every month there was always something. When she first moved there, there was issues. Um, Listen. We have the water bill we've talked about. Do you have a list that you uh, of a letter that you may have sent to her telling her, I'm keeping this and this is why I feel I have a right yes, to keep it? Yes, Your Honor. It? All right, let me go over that. 
So can I add something to this? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so it, it wouldn't do me any justice to stand here and lie. These were great people. Great. Like they came, they anything that I asked for, they did. Valentine's Day, they came in and put flowers on my porch. Anything that I had really asked for, they really did. We shared scriptures back and forth throughout this time. All of a sudden, it went haywire. Do you know when it went haywire? It went haywire sometime around about a year and a half into my into the time that I was in the home. And do you know why it went haywire? Like, can you pinpoint what the reason was? Or what do you think was the reason? I mean, because it was so many things that led up to it. it so you feel, like, you feel like you had legitimate concerns month, you know, month after as month. things happened, and, and you feel like they felt that you were just whining too much or something and that they were sick of you. Um, what is this a picture of? These are pictures that you took to justify keeping some of the security deposit. What is that? That's just dog hair in all of the vents that we had to clean out. And then this is the grass, okay. And you kept $35 for that. Yes. All right, what's that? Uh, that is the old doorbell camera that she took. Mm. Well, let's talk about that. Part, <clears throat> a huge part of your lawsuit has to do with an alarm bill for $3,773.58. What on earth is that? When I moved into a home, this alarm system that's on this table right here was in the home. Okay, when, so why is it on your side of the table if it belongs to the home? Because they, they sent me a bill for $3,785. Who did? Vivid Alarm System. Okay, whose alarm system is it? It was in the home when I moved in the home. Okay, they sent you a bill because you took the alarm system with you when you moved out. No, they sent me a bill because when I moved into the home, they said, that we have an alarm system here, but would you like to have it activated? I said, oh yeah, fine. Got the alarm system activated. I was receiving a bill every month for about 69 to $70, which I gave them. Okay. And so I called the alarm company like October, November. I said, I do not want this alarm system. You know, what can I do? They said, well, shut Had it you off. signed a contract with them? I, I did. For how long? I was under an assumption I was only signing for well, do you have the, Do you have the contract she signed with the alarm company? Yeah. I don't have the contract that she signed, but I do have a email from the alarm, alarm company. company saying Let's when we end it. So if, do you have a, co the, a copy of the contract you signed with the alarm company? I, I just have bills. Okay. Why, though, did you take the alarm with you when you moved out? Because at this point, it's on my credit. Vivid sent me a bill, and they because, never wait, took had you back stopped ownership. I it? disconnected the service, and so once How, I, what does that mean? You called them and said, "I don't want this anymore." Yes, I called them. And, and said, did they say, "Yeah, no problem"? They or? said, "Yes, no problem." I said, "When I moved here, I need to find out what do I need to do about putting it back in the landlord's name." They said, "Just have yeah, but you can't just do that. You can't decide someone else has to well, pay it was your a trans It was only a transfer of service. Well, I know. Well, somebody, I, I have to decide what that means. It a transfer of service, put it back in their name. All that has to, I need to see the contract with the, and nobody brought a contract. Did you bring your original contract yes, with them? Let me see your original contract. So why do they have to pay the bill you assumed? I did not assume a $3,700 bill. I assumed a monthly amount for service. Right, but the $3,700 bill came because you stopped paying that monthly amount. That's why it sounds like they Correct. billed you. It's so why would they have to eat a $4,000 bill that got created? Because probably, probably because you took the alarm system with you too. Is that a rented no, alarm the, system? Like the, no, that's you own it? Yes, after the, five after years, the, after the, after the contract, contract ends. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so that's why the equipment is here today, because when I turned the service off, the equipment was still there. But once they left everything in my name and sent me a $3,700 bill, that was like I own it. So, so what'd you it, do? You went back to the house and took it off the house? No, I took it when I moved out. So as I understand it, you have a $6,000 lawsuit, which is your statutory maximum. You have doubled the amount of the security deposit, which you're calling 1450, but they did send to you $971. So that wouldn't be the right way to do it. What you'd be able to sue for, because you live in a state that allows for doubling the security deposit that is wrongfully withheld, um, is double the amount wrongfully withheld, which at best, according to your testimony, is the 1450 minus the 971, which is $479. This amount that you're suing for is the last thing that I want to discuss with you, which is almost four grand from the alarm company 
So I need to see proof that you have been billed four grand by the alarm company. And while you are looking for that, I would like to discuss with you, do you have, did you hand me the list of reasons? Yes, you did. According to you, the reason that you were deducting 479 is for the past water bill, 171, which I don't think that there is really any dispute about. That leaves in play between these parties $308. Then the prorated water bill of 87.63, which I really don't think there's a dispute about either, that leaves in play $220.37 in dispute between the parties. The grass cutting, I find $35 to be a reasonable amount, and that's $185.37 in dispute between the parties. The replacement locks, we're going to put a pin in right now, and the repainting and holes. According to you, how much did you deduct for filling in the holes and stuff? $50. Which is imminently reasonable. Yes. I wish that's what landlords in my life had deducted. That means we're arguing about $135.37. Yes. That is what has caused all this turmoil. All right. Why did you change the locks that day? I want to discuss with you why that happened that day, because you, you want to deduct from her security deposit the $95 for that. Well, when we went on June 1st, we couldn't get in the house, so we had to have a locksmith, and he... But why didn't you just was, call her, because you had her phone number, and I you had a way to... I mean, okay, listen. We didn't... All right, didn't you, you, like guys eat the, you guys yeah. eat the, lo the, lock, the lockout. That's not... I don't think that that's uh, something that she should have to pay. I have um, to so what that means is that there is the $40.37 that you should have returned to her and you should have returned to her and didn't. Now you have counterclaimed against her $505.92 with a whole list of things that you had never included in the original letter. Did you take the bathroom shelving, the curtain rods, uh, the curtains, a basket and a bathroom mirror, and toilet paper holders? No, ma'am, I didn't. Okay. It seems to me somebody well, took them. Well, out. where are the pictures? Because... Okay. Here are the pictures. Yeah. There are the curtain rods and there are the curtains. Okay. There are the shelves that they're talking about, which were also removed. There are the curtain rods and there are the curtains. And they took those pictures on April 1st when I moved in because that stuff was not there. It's March 31st if you look at the top. And all that is the day before you move in. Okay. When I listen to you and I try to determine if you could possibly be telling the truth, I say to myself, okay, does it make any sense that someone would have pictures that are dated March 31st of how they're handing the apartment over in order to document the condition of the apartment, but take a $10 curtain with them or remove a curtain rod or take the toilet paper holder? It doesn't make any sense. There's no reason why anybody would do that. Show me the proof of the value. Like, where do you get all these values that you're attaching to it? Um, do you have the receipts for any of these things? These are the items that we have to go back and place. So all no, you got I is just have. stuff off on the internet? You don't have receipts for it? Yes. Uh, where I shop at, at Lowe's, those are the items that I was, did you print that off? In the bath and beyond. Store. Okay, this is just a picture of, I'd like to see the letter that you, that this is a picture of. It's just the little corner that says an amount and them agreeing to settle this account for a lesser amount, which you have deliberately cropped out of the picture that you're well, showing me. Well, I didn't me. crop it out. I give, sent that, but I do have the- Just give me the, look, ma'am. I do I, have the settlement I, I need letter. you to understand that I, I, if you have the settlement, show me that. I mean, but they, they, they so long, far and gone that- I don't know what that means. Did you settle it or no? I did not. No. Okay. Okay. So this credit. is a settlement offer from a long time ago. I got it. That the thirty-seven hundred was originally what the bill was, and now they're just sending me settlement letters. Okay. So they're telling you we'll take two thousand eight hundred and eighty, but you didn't pay any of those. All right, but you realize that they're coming after you because you signed a contract with them. That gives them the right to go after you. This doesn't mean that they have to pay it. That's ridiculous. So who takes advantage of who more, landlords or tenants? What do you say? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> landlords shadier than tenants, tenants shadier than landlords. I'd say tenants. Huh? So, I would say tenants. Why do you say? Sometimes they take advantage of, you know. But I mean, look, landlords sometimes withhold security. They won't give you the money back. Tenants damage units. Who's worse? The tenants. Generally? Yes. Why? Because they don't take care of the property. Because they don't own it. Yeah. They don't feel invested in it. Exactly. Got your point, going inside the courtroom. Did you really bring flowers on Valentine's Day there? Yes. That was so nice. Why? Just because? Just to do it. What was it? Just, just It was Valentine's Day. I just sat him on her porch for her. 
All, all I'm saying Hold on one is second. There's no question pending. I find that you folks are not responsible to pay her bill to an alarm company that she entered into a contract with. That's between her and the alarm company. I've, I, I, you're not making a claim to that because she's the one who f is responsible for finishing the payments and everything else. So that stuff belongs to her. And I guess that's why she took it. Um, in terms of the amount that you have withheld, you have the checks for 971, right? I do. Okay, so that leaves $479 that you have not uh, paid her. Um, and I find that you are entitled to keep the following. The 171 and the 8763, which she does not dispute, are, are the prorated water bills. The grass cutting, $35 is reasonable. The locksmith, indeed, the, le the lease says you can't change the locks. Um, and, and the thing is, people do change the locks, but then they give the landlord the key, so then there isn't a problem, usually. Um, the replacement locks, $40. What is that, the physical locks? Yes. Okay. And the repainting and holes filled in the wall, $50. I find that you have a right to keep the amount that you kept. Okay. Um, now on the counterclaim, we have a couple of issues, which is, you know, you never even mentioned this stuff. And I'm wondering why you didn't. Um, you say, well, because it wasn't in the lease, so we thought we couldn't. But that doesn't make very much sense. But that's what you say is your reason. My litigants' reasons don't always make sense. They're, they're, they may not be sensical, but they're yours. And that's why you say you didn't mention it before. You do have the pictures to show that stuff. The values you're asking for are completely inflated because I'm not going to give you replacement value. I'm going to give you the used value of something okay. if it looks like you know she took it. Um, her answer to this wasn't, those were mine to take. Her answer to this is, that wasn't even there. But I know that she's lying about that, and I know that she took them because they're not there now. Uh, not even the rod? Not even the holders? No. No, because they were freestanding. No, I'm not talking about the toilet paper. The toilet that was paper holder. I'm yes. not talking about that. Oh. I meant the rods and oh, the, the rods. Rod. No, they're That's where the holes were. That's the where the holes that. came from. This was a four-bedroom house. You think I wasn't going to hang curtains on my windows? No, we think you weren't going to take their curtains and curtain rods. That's what we think. So out of the whole house, you would leave one curtain and think I wasn't going to use no curtains throughout the rest of the house. What am I going to do with that's some $10 not a, curtains? That's not what we're talking about. No one is charging you for that. They want you not to take things that weren't yours. You okay. get it? Okay, and, and I stated, if you yeah, go back I find to in favor phone, of the defendants on the counterclaim in the amount of $200. And on your claim against them, I find that what they withheld was the appropriate amount. That's my judgment. So it didn't work out too well for the plaintiff in this case. Ms. Glass, uh, I don't know if you understand, but you didn't get anything in your lawsuit, and they get $200 from you for material that you took from them, you know, the apartment when you left. Basically, that's what it comes down to. What do you think? I don't think anything. I think they were dishonest from day one. And the alarm system, obviously. They were dishonest about that, too. They knew they should have took it back over, and they didn't. And that's the end of discussion. Hopefully, you know, they, they claim to be godly people and evangelists, and I'm not going to worry about it. No, no matter what this claim says, we all know who has the upper hand. So. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, here comes the uh, here comes Maurice, the defendant. You heard what she said. You're going to get two hundred dollars from her. You yes. won that part, so she was suing you for six thousand. She didn't get any of that. Correct. So, what are you thinking? Uh, we just next time we know to do our due diligence a lot better, and a lot of the things that she wanted it was not our problem. Um, so it's a win for us. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Harvey. Okay, Doug, um, look, credibility is pretty much everything in most court cases because usually a judge has to decide who's telling the truth and who is lying. And that will ultimately determine who wins and who loses a court case. In this case, the plaintiff just shot her credibility uh, by stealing. So when somebody comes into court and they've shown that they're not trustworthy, that literally is the beginning and the end of the case.